I mean, I guess I have seen him. Guys would come back for a match and be like, "He's like, nah, like I think that could have been real, like better," but he's never an asshole about it. And <laughs> I've seen him a million a disco. times. Huh? Such a disco. Yeah, well, that's another story. <laughs> disco machine. Ate that's a whole other story. <laughs> Is it worth telling now? I mean, yeah, I've seen. Dude. I don't know what the story's gonna say, but I've seen disco machine. Come well, I back tagged with him and, for a long time, <laughs> dragging. You know what I mean? And yeah, uh, and so okay, so. So, I was not the asshole that I am now. I was once a very quiet and humble guy. Maybe it was guy. a real humble kid for Yeah, a while. oh yeah. Very naive. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to show him. going to do my work. You know? Sir, how you doing? Anything neat? All right. No problem. You know, very good. Back to myself. Nice day. Yeah, yeah. It was like that. Yeah. I had to show three hours early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you show three minutes after bed. Yeah, time. imagine that, right? Anyway, so, uh, I tagged, which is the, the, by far and away, the hugest thing that happened to me up until that point. You know yeah. what I mean? By far. You know? Um, and, uh, and one of the tag teams we worked was Excalibur and, and Disco Machine. And, uh, and, you know, and I remember vividly we had this match and, uh, they, and like, at the time I'm so caught, you can probably help me explain this because you're better articulated than me. Uh, like, there, there's a time when you're wrestling when you're so caught in the match, I don't want to screw this up, I just want to do my job, but you're not really focused on what everyone else is doing in the match, you're just focused on your part. Am I, am I explaining that right? Yeah. So I think we're having this match and it's going good. The crowd's digging. We're rocking and rolling. Okay, but I kind of noticed they were saying like, you know, even Scott was like, "Tag me in, you stupid piece of shit," and like, you know, <laughs> Super Dragon's gonna have to edit that too. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, worst, ca yeah, worst catch ever. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I get up there and and I come up and I come up and back. You know, and I'm hey, okay, oh hey, good match, man. All right, cool, yeah. And I don't see Mike Disco, uh, Disco Machine. I'm like, <laughs> all right, no big deal. Well, where we were, there was there was there was the locker room. That you go on this big roof, and it was California, so everyone sits on the roof. You know, what I mean, it's all good. And I go out there, and I just get, whew, get some air. You know, because it was went like 25 minutes, and I see Mike over there, and he's crying, and I'm like. Oh, sh and my first thing is, oh, Mike shit. Mike is Mike's Disco there. Machine, by the way. Just yeah, so you guys know. yeah, I'm sorry. And so I go over there, oh, Mike, you all right? He's like, nobody likes me here. And I'm thinking, like, nobody likes me? And I was like, no, that I, th I thought it was good because, you know, hey, I don't know, you know what I mean? And like, oh, oh my God, make that guy cry and cry. And I felt terrible. And even his old partner. And then I go watch a match back on DVD, which is how long ago this was. <laughs> and uh, got the whole match. Just, God, you're a dumbass. You're an idiot. Right in the match. I'm just like, oh, man. Because uh, Disco, great dude. Wonderful so human nice. being. But in the ring, sometimes he would tend to get a little lost. But then, instead of trying to settle himself and find where he's at, he would try... He would, like, try to make up for being lost and just make shit worse. And then would just become a huge debacle. Yeah, yeah. He was And uh, in that match, it happened. And Dragon, while he, like, while this goes crying, Dragon goes up to him and I, see, I, I saw the same thing you said. This guy's crying, he's sitting on a chair like this. Remember his back was at the very end. Yeah, right? yeah, it was dramatic. Yeah. And because we like you said, we were like, it was weird. The JCC was a big building, like this kinda. Like this warehouse almost, but it was a community center. Then you went up the stairs where the locker room was, and then when you walked out of the door, one of the doors out of the locker room would go outside to a staircase so you go back down to the parking lot. Or you went through the other door, and it, it led to a roof, because next to the community center was a daycare. So you were on the daycare's roof. Like, you walked 20 feet, and you could jump into, like, 10 feet down to a playground yeah. where the kids would play. Yeah, it was that was nice. Basically. It was a California evening. Yeah, nice. so we hung out on the roof after matches to cool down. But it was really dramatic. Like, you opened the door, and all the way at the end, sitting in a corner right at the edge of the roof, was Disco on a chair, like this. With And, like, the street lights was kind of hovering over him, so it was real it dramatic. It reminded me, you remember the last scene of the Blair Witch Project, when he goes down and he finds that guy or the lady standing <laughs> yeah, in the corner? Was it was something that was kind of like that, okay? <laughs> then I see Dragon walk over. And Dragon's got the, the same walk every time, and he's just shaking his head no. And I'm like, oh, man. And I see him walk. Mike, Jack is like, dude, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then crying, so I was like, no, 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 what happened? Why are you crying? <laughs> and that was it. He was just even. He didn't give a shit that he was crying. He had to know dude, why. But why'd you fuck that up? And it's not even the the only time he cried. I remember one time. Yeah, he would cry a lot. Something I happened. He fucked up. As a, I think it was him and Aries at Bola, and he didn't catch Aries on a dive, maybe. 
And that was a big match because Dragon would never put Disco in high-profile matches. Right. But for that Bola, he needed somebody, so he gave Disco a match with Ares, which was his biggest opponent in a long time. Yeah. So Disco was fucking psyched. And for what it's worth, I thought the match was all right, but it didn't go super well. Disco cried after. And I always remember this sight. Generico was teaming Quicksilver at the time. And Quicksilver was at the show. I don't even know if he was wrestling. He might not have been. Or this might actually have been another match where Disco was crying. I just know Quicksilver was there and Generico was there too. And as Mike is crying in the corner, uh, I'm sitting there. I'm like sitting Indian style, just doing whatever. And I look up and Generico and Quicksilver are standing next to me. And Quicksilver's going, look at him, Generico. He's always crying. And Generico starts to laugh. Like he's trying not to laugh. Quicksilver's like whispering in his ear. No, no, look at him. Everybody hates wrestling him all the time. And Generico's like trying not to fucking laugh out loud as Mike is crying there. And Quicks and he's trying to pull away. Quicksilver's holding him by the other. No, look, look at him. He's crying still. He's a grown man. And Generico's dying. And then I'm laughing because it's just craziness. He would have been always one that Mary would always go out to IHOP afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then he would always take me to the airport. And like, you know, most of the time they'd be like, yo, yeah, man, okay, you come back, yeah, we'll come back next month, man. And there was something. 